Welcome to How to Compare Fingerprints. Today we're going to go over the basics. Before we get into comparing fingerprints, we need to define a few terms. The most basic formation in a fingerprint is the ridge. These are the black lines that form the patterns. The core of a fingerprint, right here in the center, is the innermost recurve at the center of the pattern. This ridge flows up, recurves right in the middle, and flows back down right here in the middle of the pattern. A delta is this type of feature where three areas converge into a triangle type shape. You can see right here is the center of this delta. The three basic fingerprint patterns are the arch, the loop, and the whorl. The ridges in an arch pattern start on one side of the finger, rise in the middle, and exit out the opposite side. There are usually no cores or deltas in an arch. The ridges in a loop pattern start on one side of the finger, loop in the middle, and exit on the same side they started. There is usually one core right here and one delta in a loop pattern. A loop can face either left, like this one does, or to the right, like this one. The ridges in a whorl pattern form a generally round shape. There are usually two cores, one facing up and one facing down, and two deltas, one on the left and one on the right. Looking closer at a fingerprint, you can see that occasionally the ridges will start and stop as they flow through the pattern. This ridge right here flows upwards and stops right here, while the other ridges on either side converge to fill the space. This is a ridge ending. A single ridge will occasionally split into two ridges. This ridge flows up and splits into two ridges at this point. This is a bifurcation. A dot is this feature where the ridge starts and stops over a short distance making the ridge approximately only as long as it is wide. When comparing fingerprints, you can usually use a magnifier and a pair of sharp pointers to keep track of things. The magnifier is like a large jeweler's loop. The pointers can be almost anything that's thin at one end, like a pen, a paper clip, or an engraving tool. On the other hand, you can use a scanner to get the fingerprints onto the computer screen and use Photoshop to mark the points in the print. The first step in a fingerprint comparison is to thoroughly analyze the unknown or latent print. In this example here, we have a right slope loop. You can see that the ridges come in from the right hand side and loop around the middle. I will first adjust the levels so we can have better contrast in the image. As I zoom in, we're going to analyze the condition of the ridges, how well we can see them, what points and features we can see, and where they are. So I'm going to use the pencil tool to mark these points, the ridge endings and bifurcations. The first one is this center ridge that joins with the ridge that curves around it. As we count to the left, we skip one, two, three ridges, and the fourth ridge is a ridge ending that faces up. It's a little hard to see, but the next ridge to the left is a bifurcation that faces upwards. The next ridge to the left is a bifurcation that faces downwards, and the next ridge is as well. Counting up from there, we skip one and two ridges, this third ridge stops with a ridge ending. Skipping one ridge, the second ridge is another ridge ending. Coming down this ridge and skipping one to the left, the second ridge is a ridge ending that flows down to a bifurcation. Counting from this bifurcation, we can count to the right, one and two, to another bifurcation. Skipping two ridges, the third is another ridge ending. I'll mark a few other points that are fairly easy to see and there are plenty of other points that I'm leaving out for this video. As we bring up the known fingerprint, we begin the next phase in the comparison process, which is the comparison phase, where we look back and forth between these two prints looking for matching points that are in the same relative position in both prints. We can see that, first of all, this print is also a right slope loop. We want a clear starting focal point to use as a starting point for the comparison. For these prints, the core is clear and easy to find to use as our starting point. Here we have the same ridge that comes up and ends in the ridge that curves around it. Counting to the left four ridges, we find this upward ridge ending. The next ridge is an upward bifurcation and the next two ridges are downward bifurcations. As we count up from there, we have a ridge ending on the third ridge and another ridge ending on the second ridge past that one. Skipping one ridge, we find another ridge ending with a bifurcation below, just like in the latent print. There is another bifurcation on the second ridge to the right, and a ridge ending on the third ridge past that. I'll now mark the rest of the corresponding points, and you can see that everything lines up to be the same in the two prints, 
with each point about the same distance apart and, more importantly, that the ridges have the same unit relationship, meaning that these ridge endings in both prints have exactly one ridge between them and that these two points have exactly two ridges between them in both prints. The third phase in the comparison process is the evaluation phase. We look at the similarities and any differences that we found during the comparison phase and come to a conclusion of identification, exclusion, or inconclusive. For this example, there are enough clear features that share the same orientation and unit relationship in both prints to come to the conclusion of identification that these two prints were made by the same finger.